Do you have social media? Because I can guarantee that most of the people watching this video have or have either visited a social media account. Whether that means that you're an active user on social media platforms like TikTok, Snapchat, um, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Or you have just visited social media platforms like YouTube for a class study or have set up an account for a class activity. How old were you when you started using social media? Because I know that I was the ripe age of 10 years old. I actually never even created my first social media account. My brothers, as a joke, we were on family vacation, both one 10 years older and one three years older, created an account for me on Instagram. They asked me when I had created an Instagram account, jokingly, thinking that it was funny, me being 10 years old, knowing that I wasn't allowed to have a Facebook account and them telling me that it was similar to Facebook, started mildly freaking out. And they ended up admitting to me that they had gone out of their way to make a false profile for me and gave me my phone back and had my profile picture set and everything. Little did they know that this was my first social media account that I would start posting on, communicating on, etc. In 2023, a survey came out stating that 30% of Americans aged 12 and older had social media accounts and 60% 12 and older um, were heavy users of social media. How does social media impact young brains? Social media influences self-development. The younger that people are feeding into social media, the more that they may seek validation through social media. So the younger you are, you might start posting and at first it might be playful and everything. And then you might start getting a few comments. Depending on if those comments are good or bad, it may impact how they start viewing themselves. So if somebody is posting a picture of themselves and they told they're pretty, da da da, da etc., they might feel really good about themselves. But they might go look at their friend's profile and notice that they have more um, comments and likes and they might feel insecure and feel the need to change themselves. Or say that they are just getting pure hate comments because cyberbullying is a very big aspect of social media now as well. So they post what they like and they start getting bullied, they get negative comments. They might change what they like and how they view themselves because of these comments on social media, which is very damaging to a young brain. So how else can social media impact young brains? Social media can influence feelings of jealousy or self-comparison. As most of us know, almost everything can be made out to look real through social media now. There are multiple editing software platforms, either through your phone or your computer, etc. They literally have ways to manipulate people's voices to make it sound like they're saying things that they're not saying. Like anything is possible. There are websites that are dedicated to satire news. This being said, this sets up this unrealistic goal in young minds. They are trying to achieve these expectations that aren't real to anybody, but they don't know that because they're so young, they're just feeding into it and they see all of this. They see the praise that people get for this stuff and not understanding that it's real. They put themselves at a lower bar than the people that are over here. But in reality, it's just not a obtainable goal. Festinger, a sociologist, has a theory. It's called the downward and upward theory. The downward theory is um, when you compare yourself to the people that are below you or have just in whatever aspect that is, they just are below you and whatever goal you're trying to achieve, which will raise your self-confidence up. And the upward theory is when you compare yourself to people that are higher than you, they may already be like at that goal or already achieve the goal that you're wanting to achieve. And this lowers your self-confidence because you're not at the same place with them. So moving on to my last point, social media impacts morals. People with young minds are going to be influenced easier because they don't even have their morals set out for them yet. Um, this could lead to groupthink. Groupthink is making a decision in a group in a way that discourages creativity and independence. Um, groupthink 
a lot of the time it's seen in social media, it's seen in business, it's seen in political aspects, etc. A lot of people get into a group and they decide on one way of thinking. And whether somebody in the group disagrees or not, they may not say anything because they don't want to disappoint the group. If everybody in the group is agreeing, yes, um, I love ketchup on my mac and cheese, just a weird example. And this person might think, wow, like I hate my, like ketchup on my mac and cheese, but everybody is saying that like we should do this and that this is cool, da 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 da. They're gonna get put into that thinking and whether they agree or not, they might not say anything and they will just hush up to blend in with the crowd and um, not cause any drama. Which really harms a young person's like self-identity. They are basically getting told through social media who they need to be and what they need to act like. And they don't get the time to develop that self-image. Um, a psychologist who did a report made a quote. It says, you hope to teach them that they can disagree without jeopardizing the relationship. But what social media does is teach them to disagree in ways that are more extreme and do jeopardize the relationship, which is exactly what you want, you don't want to happen. Which is true because um, at this point in social media, it's at a very influential state. A lot of people have careers based off social media and Anything that says like that will fly on social media will go. People will follow whether it is good or bad. So to review my points, um, we have many people. Obviously, social media is very influential in our current day. People literally have jobs based off of it. Um, social media influences self-development and younger people feed into social media um, can be at risk at harming their self-development. And social media can influence feelings of jealousy or comparison in younger people. And then social media um, impacts morals in younger crowds, making people, the younger generations, more easily influenced. Um, this is why we need to protect our young, younger generations, because as my generation, a few years ago, we were all wishing we could go to space and land on the moon and now we're getting ready to face the real world and we're setting up and preparing but we didn't have as much protection with social media due to the fact that it was so new in my generation people now are getting introduced to generate to social media at an even younger age i was 10 when i first started having social media but there are people or younger generations that are now being introduced to social media when they are seven, eight, nine, which is very harmful. And the way that we can prevent this is by setting up rules, maybe an age restriction, which might work, but there's always ways around it. But I think the most important thing to do to protect our younger generations from the negative effects of social media is advertising safe social media usage. I feel like it should be heavily talked about in schools, maybe a class offered to younger generations starting in middle school so that they can know what social media, how harmful social media can be and how to prevent this from happening and how to use it, social media to the maximum level in a beneficial way and avoid the negatives. So, Thank you for listening today, and I hope you think about how you can protect our younger generations from social media. Thank you.